Yesterday, the Bring Back Our Girls group marked the 2000 day of the abduction of Chibok school girls. And coincidentally, the former Prime Minister of the United Kingdom released his memoir and accused the former President of Nigeria of delaying with rescuing the girls. And the President is stating what we all already know, that the wealth of Nigeria is in the hands of a few. But the question is, what is the government going to do about it? This is Plus Politics and I am Felicity Isiwiki. You're watching Plus Politics on Plus TV Africa. In his books, For the Records, former UK Prime Minister David Cameron had said that Jonathan, who was in office as at the time, over 200 girls who were abducted from a school in Chibok had refused the help of the British security agencies in the rescue of the girls. The two leading political parties are having a go at each other now over the competency and ball dropping of the PDP and the APC administration. But seriously, what difference does it make when insecurity daily stares us in the face? I'm being joined by a political analyst, Babashola Adigbui. Thank you very much for joining us. It's a pleasure to be again. Cameroon versus Jonathan. We offered to help. You rejected it. You were sleeping on the wheel. Um, Jonathan, no. Your help was came with a string. I should sign the Same-Sex Marriage Act into law. Um, what is your reaction? Well, um... I think I want to go with um, the former president on that. Because when I went through what he said yesterday, and one of the things he said is this, how will I reject what I requested for? That I actually requested for the support of the Britain government, uh, the Britain, US, and some other Western countries to assist in locating the Chibo girls that were captured or, uh, by the Boko Haram. <clears throat> so, how will I now reject what I actually requested was, since it involved lives of people? And also stated, the reason why you guys rejected to support us was because I refused to support same-sex marriage in Nigeria. I think I will agree with him on that. Because for me, it's obvious that he actually requested. And if he requested, so why did they refuse to support the government of Jonathan? Cameron was only trying to play, uh, to, play, to play the angel on this side for what I've seen so far. But I'm not going to blame, the I'm not going to blame Cameron. I will blame the Nigerian government for one thing. And that is just the necessary equipment the necessary uh, 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 machineries that were needed by the Nigerian security were not actually provided for them to do the necessary job. As yeah, 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 before we go ahead and dissect that, let's look at, um, at that time, uh, some of the arguments that the APC is bringing up is that for two weeks after the abduction of these girls. There was no official statement from the presidency. It only came two weeks after. That is their allegation um, in response to what Jonathan is saying, and the, um, in, in response to what Jonathan is saying. And they are also saying that the Buhari's administration, that's on the PDP side, is only trying to divert attention from the increasing suffering of Nigerians, the taxes, it talked about the 500 uh, billion naira um, um, social investment program funding that's been alleged, you know, all of that. Does Cameroon's memoir warrant this sort of bickering among our leaders? Well, <laughs> actually, Jonathan, during that period, already acted very late. I think it cost this lady that was shot in the Syria, that's now in the United States, to come to Nigeria. Melania. Uh, Mal yeah, I can't remember the name of the lady. Yeah. To come to Nigeria and talk to her president before the president actually made uh, a national reaction to the abduction of the Shiba girls. 
they were right. But the argument the PDP is, is coming up with, uh, for me, <coughs> is baseless. So, but if, if you're saying there was a delay in response, are you, because he, he's, he has been interviewed severally since he left office, and at one point he, is, he was saying that, he, he acknowledges that there may have been lapses, but he refuses to take blame for, you know, the situation and the inability to rescue the girl at that time. For someone who was at the hem of affairs, wouldn't he have some portion of the blame from that incident? Definitely. He will have portion of the blame because he have the intelligence working for him. They give him a report every day. They let him know what is going on with the security of the country anywhere, any day, because he's the commander in chief of armed, uh, the commander in chief of armed forces. So when it, when the issue was reported to the president, what did he do about it? Initially, he did not believe. Initially, they said that it was being politi uh, politicized. Until until when there was noise from different parts of the world. Uh, in, uh, in respect of the Shibor girls, the president did not react the way he should have reacted. If the president had reacted earlier, as at the time he got the report, it may be the first day or the second day that the, those girls were uh, actually abducted. If he had reacted and he had put in place the necessary machineries, I am very sure those girls would have, at least some of them, would have been uh, uh, would have rescued. rescued from the militant. But what happened? After, so, you know, the Chippewa guys, I think, were returned home maybe last or two years ago, if I remember very well, last or two years. No, not after Boag. Not all of them. Not all of them. After yeah. Boag, some of them actually came. And they made, to, they made up to understand that they were actually in Madugari for almost one week or two weeks that they were in a particular house in Madugari before they were later moved from that particular city to the forest. In other words, there is no way they will move such large number of people from Chibog to Maduguri and from Maduguri back to the forest without anybody noticing. noticing. So the question is, yes, he has accepted that. He, will accept that. he has accepted that he's going to take part of the blame. But at the same time, he failed to do what was necessary when it was needed most. Okay, let's look at other more important issues, and then we'll get back to the big carry in a bit. It's 2,000 days in captivity for these girls. <coughs> About 112 of them are still not released from the captivity of Boko Haram. And there was a commemoration uh, by the BBOG group in Abuja and other parts of uh, the country, and of course, prominent people came out to talk about it as well. Shouldn't this be of more import for the government than a memoir by a former UK Prime Minister? Um, definitely, it should. But I'm very sure if you call the government now, they will tell you they are working on it, they are negotiating with the Boko Haram militants, they are doing all those uh, sorts of things. But as far as we are concerned, if there is no result, you are doing nothing. What we are interested in is the result. No matter how long you have negotiated, you have been in the government now, it's going about over four years now. Yes, you brought back some Shibo girls. After that, the Leah Shiraibo and some other ladies that were adopted, some of them were returned, except one or two. We learned one died, and we still have one. But the question is, what happens to some of them? Do, you, do, they, do they actually have reports on the status of those ladies, of those girls that were adopted? I can tell you, the government, as far as I'm concerned, the government of Nigeria it has not doing enough if they are doing anything at all. It's, they are not doing enough, they are doing anything at all. Because these are human beings, and for every serious government, the security of lives and protection of life should be your number one go in any position you find yourself in the world. But where we still have a lot of people over there, every day you come out to tell us Boko Haram 
have been totally uh, destroyed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that brings me to what uh, Obi Ezekwesili, uh, the former Minister of Education, is saying she's been at the forefront of this campaign, along with some other persons, release the girls, release the girls. Now she's saying that uh, the presidency or the Buhari administration cannot claim to have defeated Boko Haram or done much if... Um, the people like the Chibok girls and others are still being held captive by Boko Haram, then nothing has been done. Does she have a point? She has a point. You can't come out to tell us that technically you have defeated Boko Haram. Technically, you have the, the Boko Haram is no longer existing. They are no longer occupying. Look, that is none of our business. If truly you have defeated Boko Haram, so what happened to the captors? Uh, sorry. To the captives what happened to them where are they are they still alive are they dead have they been traded by uh Boko Haram maybe to order because i remember that time they said that some of the uh, some of the girls have been treated, uh, traded as slaves to some other countries a good intelligence report should be able to tell you but as far as i'm concerned i will not say Boko Haram has been fully defeated we know they have two fashions now. There's one. Uh, I swap. Yeah. The, the, the I swap and the Boko Haram, they have different fashions. So we don't even know the one that is actually <coughs> holding the, holding the girls. <coughs> so, excuse me. Holding the girls. We don't even know. So, as far as I'm concerned, the government needs to do more in respect of the. If they are dead, come out and tell us that. Come. We can no longer locate these girls again. Either they, have been, they, either they are dead or they have been traded out of the country. Just come out and tell. Let everybody, so that everybody with mind will just be at but, peace. But, the, but the, the space at which, they, they, from time to time, they've come out to um, issue statement on, you know, the Chibok girls and what the situation is with them. Um, has this been enough? You apparently don't think that is the situation. How can they flip the coin and reassure Nigerians that they are actually conscious Consciously working to bring these girls back. Well, um, like I said earlier, it's the result that matters. It's not what you tell us or what you are doing. Yeah, but, but I mean, communication is part of it. If, if they just keep us black, is, do you prefer them to keep? Because now you're saying that it doesn't seem like they're doing anything. So wouldn't it be better if maybe from time to time they give us an update on where they are at with the rescue effort for the girls? Yes. I made mention of that earlier. Tell us the updates of the girls. Let us know where, what is actually happening with the girls. Let us know if some of them have been married off. Let us know if some of them have been killed during the period the, 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 the Air Force or the Nigerian Army was attacking the Boko Haram. Let us know if some of them have been married off. Let us know. You get my point. But what I don't want to believe or I don't want to hear is someone coming out to tell me Boko Haram has been defeated, they are no longer existing, and whereas we don't know what happened to those that were captured by the so-called Boko Haram that have been defeated. That's what I don't want to hear. What I want to know is, okay, now we've been able to locate them, we are negotiating with them, and this is what they are requesting for. We, for security reasons, we'll not be able to disclose some things to you. So, but we assure you that very soon we are going to get something out of our negotiation. On a serious note, though, do you as an individual have hope that these girls are actually still alive? Well, in time to look at it, I will not say all of them are still alive. Some would have been dead because it's only very, very few of them that are strong that will still be in that, uh, 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 in that, uh, what's it called, in that forest for a very long time. Some would have been married off, like I said, some would have been traded, or some would have been killed, accidentally killed. Even by some of them, the Boko Haram today would have killed some of them. You know, you can't actually see where they are. But one thing I'm so sure of is that the number has reduced. Um, another concern that people are expressing is the fact that these girls, five years plus, is a long time. And we know that from the Leah Sharibu case that there is indoctrination going on. Are these girls still available to be rescued? Have they been indoctrinated and absorbed into the insurgency? Or they're still, are, are we still going to be rescuing 
innocent girls or girls that have changed. Five years is indeed a long time. Well, their, their orientation would have changed. We can't go that out. They would have indoctrinated them, changed their orientation. They've been thinking about uh, uh, the same with the Boko Haram militants are thinking. And I'm very sure some of them were used as suicide bomber. You remember there was a time we had in the uh, increasing number of girls being used as suicide bomber in the north there. I'm very sure some of them would have been used up by them. And, uh, 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 and at the same time, after five years is a long time. Actually, five years is a long time. It's just, it just, for example, you leave the country, you go to another country to take, for example, maybe United States, United Kingdom. You can't be in that country for a good five years and your retention would not have changed. So, but being in such a, a, a place for a very long time, I can tell you, even if you're trying to uh, rescue them, is there is high possibility of them telling you, we are okay, we are doing fine. We like what these people are doing for us. You, you know, there is high possibility. Even some of them would have been trained. So to what now happens to all the groups and all the agitation across the world, not just Nigeria, that they should come back if such a scenario does present itself? What do we do? Well, we, we still have to cry out. Because we are talking about children here. Children that are now growing to adults, some of them were in their teens, five years had it, so they are already 20 plus. You get so we still have to cry out. The Yorubas we say, it is better for me to know my child is dead than for the uh, for uh, for the child to be missing. Leave their dead. Let, if the girl is, I see my daughter and I notice that the daughter is no longer blending. Let, I still have that hope of the changing. Is orientation. You get my point. Our orientation. But if I've not seen my daughter, I don't even know he's dead. I have every right to cry out, to cry out and ensure and pray for the return of such daughter, because she's my daughter. Well, we'll still certainly be keeping hope alive that they are well and uh, they can still uh, be rescued. But let's just go back to that bickering thing that came off the UK Prime Minister, former UK Prime Minister's memoir. In your opinion, what kind of conversation should such a memoir be bringing as against the bickering that we have? A, a reverse scenario, in your opinion, that will be ideal and conducive for the case of these girls that have been abducted would be what? Um, for that memoir, I went through it yesterday, and one of the things I asked myself is, what actually does the former Prime Minister Cameron wanted to achieve from writing that? Well, I don't know what he actually wanted to achieve, but what I notice is this. He's trying to pass a message to the people some of these achievements, those they tried to support during the period they was in government and they rejected their support, try, you know, trying to uh, take blame of himself in that, for that period. It's one of those things I believe he actually wanted to achieve. But one thing I know is this, you sent spy. According to him, you sent spy to Nigeria, you located the girls using your spy uh, airplane, and even you send the, like, your forces down to look around, we were able to locate them. The question now is, did they communicate to the Nigerian government? Yeah, apparently there's something must have transpired between, between them. But the what I'm looking at actually is, I'm trying to find out from you, like this comes out, should Jonathan have responded? Because the APC said, he shouldn't have responded. You know, they believe on their own um, way of understanding. The PDP come out and they speak. So what kind of response would have been ideal so that this memoir, as against being a divisive element, as it looks like it's becoming, and a political tool, it would have been maybe something that would have pushed for the conversation about the welfare of these girls? Well, um, I like Jonathan for responding, actually. I think he responded at the right time. He did not wait for a day or two days before responding. It came and it sent it back. It's a very good thing because he had his own report already. 
He knew what happened. Why did he not? Mr. Ma, don't come and rubbish me. But is, is salvaging reputation more important than the security of these girls and this country in general? Because this bickering doesn't seem to take into cognizance the security situation in this country. It's more like your reputation is messed up or your reputation is not messed up. Don't come and sully my reputation and all of that. Is reputation more important than the security and welfare of the people of this country? Well, reputation is not more important than security, actually. Reputation is not more important, but the truth is Jonathan is no longer in position now. It's, it's now the honors is now on the present president who is there. Jonathan did what he could during this period. Yes, to some of us he did not perform well, and to some of us that was even the reason why he was voted out. You get. But for me, like I said, the way he responded, I like it. I like it that he responded that way. Don't rubbish me. I have my report. I have my own fact with me. We sent you letters. We communicated with you, to you guys for me. That, but for the securities, security, there is no 100% security anywhere in the world. But we can minimize insecurity. It is not a bad reputation. What is reputation if you don't have good security? Yes, Cameron. This is what happened. It's never too late for the United Kingdom to assist Nigeria in bringing the cheaper girls if you still can still locate them. Work the Nigerian government and let's say the outcome of your relationship with the Nigerian government in bringing those girls. For me, <laughs> I'm okay with that. But I like him responding immediately. I think I like that. What's your overall perception about these girls situation and their family what's your overall perception on how the government should better handle the situation and maybe address some of these concern about whether these girls are alive or dead uh, well i am um, what i will suggest to the government is that they should continue to work on locating those girls then more importantly the insecurity in the country. The government must focus on the insecurity by minimizing and look at the problem, the factors that are actually causing the insecurity and address it. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts on this segment. It's a pleasure. I'll be right back with you. All right, we'll go on a short break. When we return, we'll be talking about Nigeria's wealth in the hands of a few. Stay with us. <laughs> 